Welcome, welcome everybody to the Hamptons Take Two Documentary Film Festival. Ah, uh, yay. Look at that, a great, great audience. It's wonderful. Just great. Thank you very much for coming and supporting us, supporting documentary films. I'm Jackie LaFaro, director of the festival. As we, uh, thank you, thanks. So tonight, I want to specifically thank the Bridgehampton National Bank, Claudia Pilato. I don't know if Claudia is here. There, hey. <laughs> Bridgehampton National Bank has been a, an early sponsor of this festival, presenting sponsor, and without them, we could not do it and could not do without Claudia, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> and also Brown Harris Stevens, they're our audience award sponsor, and we appreciate that too. I'm going to introduce Karen Arikian, who is our creative director. And Karen is going to give you an introduction to Liz Garbis, who is the filmmaker tonight, who is in Los Angeles. We're going to do a technological wonder tonight of Skyping her. Karen will do that interview and present the award, and then we will see the film. And then there's going to be a Q&A, so please don't go. I know people run out, but we have Ambassador Shabazz here, uh, who is um, a star in her own right. So she's going to be doing a Q&A with the producer, Amy Hobby, who is right over here. So stick around for that. I think you'll enjoy it. So without further ado, I give Karen the spotlight. Okay, um, thank you very much, and I welcome everybody tonight, especially our guests, the ambassador and Amy. Um, so I'm here, uh, Jackie asked me to give the Filmmaker uh, Choice Award tonight, and the Filmmaker Choice Award honors an outstanding documentary filmmaker who is nominated by, in this case, her peers. Um, this year we are thrilled to honor the prolific, award-winning documentarian, Liz Garbus. I, um, I want to, uh, before I start the presentation, I just want to explain, we are Skyping Liz in because about two weeks ago she was nominated for uh, the I, uh, International Documentary Association Award for Best Documentary for this year, so she's in LA, um, and I'm very grateful that she's taking the time to, to Skype in with us. But before uh, we, t we get her on screen here, hopefully, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> um, I want to uh, just give you, tell you a little bit about her background. Um, Liz is the co-founder and co-president of the issues-oriented production company, Moxie Firecracker Films, which she runs with her filmmaking partner, Rory Kennedy. Liz has been nominated for two Academy Awards, first in 1998 for her film about prisons in the US called uh, The Farm Angola, USA, and then again in 2011 for her film, Killing in the Name. Uh, in between, she has won, uh, she has had many accolades and won many awards for her moving and ambitious films, such as Love, Marilyn, Bobby Fischer, Against the World, and The Nazi Officer's Wife. Those are just a few of many. Um, tonight we will see her most recent work, What Happened, Miss Simone, uh, which started its festi festival career at the Sun as the opening night film at the Sundance Film Festival in 2015 at the beginning of this year. And I also just want to mention that uh, Liz's film and Amy's film was just uh, shortlisted for the Best Documentary Oscar for 2016. That means it's, yeah, woo! That means that it was selected from, over, from about 125 films to the short list of 15. And the uh, five finalists will be announced in January, so fingers crossed. <laughs> um, OK, so uh, I guess we want to bring up Liz now, if, this, if it works. Liz. Oops, do we have sound? Oi. Can you hear me? Yes. Liz, oh, okay. Liz, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to, to join us tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the beautiful introduction, and thanks to everyone for coming to the movies. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and, um, 
before we present your award, I just want to ask you a few questions about this film. And since the audience hasn't seen it yet, it's uh, maybe a little bit odd, but you can't join us afterwards. So I just want a couple of general questions. And I think the first one is kind of a simple one. What, what motivated you to make this movie? Well, it was actually I was invited to pitch myself as a director for this film, Radical Media um, and the family of Nina Simone, uh, the estate of Nina Simone w decided, I think, for a variety of reasons that it was kind of it was time to allow Nina's story to be told. Um, and uh, they started about looking for a director and I was called and asked if I was interested in in you know, pr presenting myself as an option for this film. I had always, I had been a Nina Simone fan since college. I had found her music then. Um, I was a fan. And my, uh, you know, when, when my now husband first came over to dinner at my apartment when we were still dating, that was, you know, the, the, the music I put on was Nina Simone. So I always knew she was cool and showed good taste, but I didn't know um, anything about her life. I didn't know anything about the woman. So when I was asked to consider making this documentary, um, you know, I thought, well, she's a fantastic artist, but you know, what what is the sort of larger story? And of course, once you start to scratch away the surface, you um, realize that this is a story of a um, a woman who was brave, boundary buster, um, kind of a, a feminist without ever kind of identifying as such, but just in her her bravery and um, fearlessness and creative output. Um, and a, you know, an, a black power icon and a musical um, phenomenon. And her story was so layered and so interesting from a point, from a psychological point of view, a social and political point of view that it just seemed to me in, like incredibly rich terrain. Um, so I pitched my little heart out and that's how, that's how the film started. <laughs> Lucky them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I guess uh, a question, when I first heard about your film, um, the film was also at the Berlin Film Festival, and uh, I, w I thought, um, that's an odd title, What Happened, Miss Simone? Oh. It, it's, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, as Amy, as you know, Amy Hobby, who's there, knows we, the the title was one of the last things that came to us in in the making of this film. We struggled for a long time with the title, um, and. Uh, um, we came to it very late in the research when a, one, of, one of my wonderful researchers found an article from 1970 written by Dr. Maya Angelou. Um, and 1970 was a time where Nina Simone, who had been this ever-present force in the civil rights scene, was gone. And um, she had left, and, and that, that force was no longer present. And um, Dr. Angelou penned this article asking kind of the questions that I think ultimately our film asks, which is, you know, what happened? What were the forces that played upon this human being, um, you know, that's kind of essentially put her into exile at that time? Um, and so, so then, you know, we decided who better to, to copy from than Dr. Angelou, and uh, that's where the title comes from. Okay. And uh, just uh, one last question. Um, what impact has this film had on you after... Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the film has been an utter joy to work on. I mean, with its extraordinary challenges or, you know, what made it so tremendous. I had an amazing team. Um, Amy Hobby there, the producer, my, my, my sort of partner in this, in this process. And I got to meet inspirational people who, you know, listening to them for 10 minutes um, can kind of put such complicated issues um, into perspective. You all are lucky to, that after this film, the Q&A will be with Ambassador Shabazz, who, you know, is a spellbinding, has a spellbinding mind. Um, and, you know, the social and political relevance of this film is as ripe and raw and urgent as it was, um, you know, when Nina wrote Mississippi Goddamn. Um, and uh, so on a political point of view, this film has, you know, continued to, you know, make me want to be kind of out there putting forward Nina's voice. And also as an artist, um, I don't, I put Nina on a pedestal as one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. I don't put myself on this pedestal, but the thing is I'm, you know, working for her, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up to that pedestal. And so as an artist, it's about um, just always pushing yourself um, to make it better, 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 harder, 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 as, as hard as, you know, you can. Um, and that's one of the things that, that Nina inspires me to. 
Thank you very much, Shannon. That's a perfect note to, to say why we want to give you this award. Um, uh. Reaching down here. <laughs> Of the film, uh, Hamptons Take Two Documentary Film Festival is proud to present you with the Filmmaker's Choice Award. Thank you so Thank much, you. Liz. Thank you. I wish I were there. Thank Giving you it so to much. Amy. And thank you, Karen and Jackie, for being such um, warm, embracing um, programmers and, and really, you know, working hard to get this film there. We really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. We're going to let you go. Um, Good luck tomorrow night at the IDA Awards, Best Documentary, one of five. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. And. Uh